morning. Today is Tuesday, the 10th day of Tavis. It is the fast day of Asana the Tavis. And hopefully we'll all have a meaningful fast and uh, we should not need the fast anymore because Mashiach should come very soon. And this uh, Tanya that we're learning today, the, we're concluding the seventh chapter from the Kuti Amarim, in a way is related to the whole idea of the fast day because we're talking about different levels of Teshuvah. What we can do to redeem and to elevate the godly sparks that fell down into the dark places through sins. And we discussed yesterday about the Klippas Noiga. That neutral shell, neutral klipa that, that conceals godliness, but it's called Noiga because it has also the potential of light. You can elevate it. And we explained that what happens when a person does something against he does something not godly. Anytime you do something not godly, the energy that you do, the energy that it creates is drawn down into the lowest, darkest places, which is called the Sholish Klippis Atmenias, the three impure shells. And in order to remove from these places, Depends what type of sin it was. If it was a, a, an object that you did, if, if a sin that was done with a, not a oh, real sin, but something that it was done not for godly purposes, it was kosher food, let's say, kosher food that you eat, but you eat with the wrong intention, then in order to and once you, you eat with the wrong intentions, it draws down the energy into low places. In order to bring it up again, all you have to do is remove and is the, uh, connect yourself once again to Hashem, to godliness, and use this energy to, in a positive way. However, when it comes to sins, when it comes to sins, then it's a different story. If a person goes eat something which is not kosher, then in order to remove the energy from the from the dark places, because these things that are forbidden, it's called asur. It's tied with the in the darkness. It's tied in the forces of evil. In order to remove it, there's two ways. One is when Mashiach comes, which will eliminate all the evil, and therefore the godly sparks that is in there will automatically go up. The other way is through teshuva, a very deep teshuva, a very deep teshuva that comes from out of deep love to Hashem. Not just a regular teshuva, not just a regular repentance. Regular repentance when a person decides and says, that's it, I'm not doing it again. And again, we explained yesterday to differentiate between the person and the act. We know there's nothing that stands in the way of teshuva. When a person does teshuva, when a person repents, he's being redeemed right away. The person is being redeemed. He's connected to Hashem right away. Here the, the question is, what about the act of the sin? The effect that it had in this, in this world. So this we said, that if it's an effect that was done through in, in a, something which is forbidden, like forbidden food, forbidden relationships. Those are things that cannot be elevated that easy. It's when Mashiach comes, after Teshuvah, of course. And the other way is through Teshuvah Me'ava, a Teshuvah, a repentance that comes from a, such a deep feeling to Hashem, that uh, love to Hashem, that you want, that the very fact that you have sinned is now a cause and a reason and a drive for you to do teshuva, to, to get closer to Hashem. So, the, so in a way, the sin itself drives you to get closer to Hashem because you feel the distance. That is why that can elevate and eliminate the darkness 
the, the energy that fell into the darkness, into the Shalash Klippis at Meis. In today's lesson, the Alter Rebbe addresses something else. But there's, different type, there's a different thing that is an exception to the rule. And we have one exception that is, makes it easier, one exception that makes it even harder to redeem. The exception that he's talking about that makes it easier is about the sin of, of uh, wasting seed. Now, this is a topic that uh, in Hasidus we don't talk much about it, not because it's not severe, it's very severe sin as we'll soon see. And but the, re- but the reason why it's not talked about, the Rebbe once explains, is because when you talk about it, that itself can lead you to, to, to get in, involved in this. The focus is we have to focus on doing positive. But yet, at the same time, if a person did violate this, we need to know how that this is severe, and we need to know how also to elevate and, 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 and redeem yourself from this. Now, so the Alter Rebbe explains that this sin, in a way, has stronger, it's worse than even forbidden relationships, physical relationships. But in the other way, it is easier to redeem. And why is that? So it's going to explain that in the, when you're talking about the energy that is released the godly energy that is released through a sin. So there is the masculine part of the sin and there's the feminine part of the sin. Just like in the physical relationships, when you talk, when a person has forbidden relationships, then his energy is absorbed in a forbidden place. So that, therefore, it becomes more it becomes connected more with the physical world and it's harder to remove it. Whereas with forbidden seed, there's no feminine part that absorbs it. So therefore it is easier to remove to the energy. How is it done? Through proper teshuva, proper repentance, and through saying the Shema by bedtime with Kavana. So let's, let's see inside what Alta Rebbe says and then we'll explain it further. However, the vitality in the drops of semen that one issued wastefully, even though it has been degraded and incorporated in the three unclean clippers in the, in, the, in the real darkness, that's the ultimate darkness. Which this does uh, it does happen. And nevertheless, you're able to ascend from there by means of true repentance. That's one thing. Step one is true repentance. And what is true repentance? Again, true repentance means when you have a firm decision, you're not gonna do it. You regret for uh, you regret the fact that you did it and you're take upon yourself not to do it. And then he says another thing, and intense concentration and devotion, the Kavana, during the recital of the Shema at bedtime. As is known from the teachings of Rabbi Yitzchak Luya, of blessed memory. Now what does it mean? the proper intention, intense concentration. What are we talking about? Are we talking about Kabbalistic things, the way to understand the way the Arizal explains it? No, simply, Kavana Tzama means when you say the Shema at bedtime and you look in the words and you understand the words. And that really needs intense concentration. Sometimes we read, we pray the davening, and we go, we, we just say the words. We don't really think of what we're saying. But when we say the Shema, we have, uh, when we have 
teshuva, proper teshuva, repentance. And we say the Shema and we look in the words and we understand the words, the meaning of the words. That is the cure for this particular sin. This is implied in the Talmudic saying, he who recites the Shema at bedtime is as if he held a double edged sword. And what is a double edged sword used for? So he says, This meaning one edge. Wherewith to slay the bodies of the extraneous forces, the clippers. The bodies of the, and we're not talking about physical body, we're talking about the spiritual bodies that is created from the clippers that have become garments for the vitality in the drops of semen. So the energy, there is a, there is a spiritual energy that becomes that comes from the semen and that the, the clippers they become like garments to the semen to the energy that comes out of it. it's all a spiritual thing and another edge and another edge by which the vitality ascends from them from the clippers as is known to the stu- students of the Kabbalah so, so again, when you say the Shema, you're able to eliminate the, the, the power, the energy that went into the Kalipas, to the, to the impure, the dark forces, with the Kavana of the Shema. And also to ascend, to bring it up to the right place. And here the Alter Rebbe explains something very interesting. He says, in the Torah, you know, in Yom Kippur, we read the whole list of forbidden relationships. The tale says not to have a relationship with the mother, the sister, with all the forbidden relationships. And um, one thing is not mentioned, this sin of waste, of waste is the sin. Although in the Torah, it does mention elsewhere, you know, the story with the, the children of Yehuda, the Torah mentions about this, but in the, it's not mentioned in the list, among the list of the forbidden relationships. Why not? The Alter Rebbe is going to explain that this is, a bit, this is the difference because this is not in the same way and it's not in the same level. On the one hand, it is more severe. Why is it more severe? Because the energy that comes from wasteful the mission is, uh, is a bondless, does not have any vessel that limits it. So the energy is considered a very deep, and, and indeed it says it causes the gullus, the exile to extend. So, so it's not, but on the other end, it's not like the absorbed into the dark forces, like the forbidden relationship, because it doesn't have the feminine part of the, of the sin, which is the, reci- the recipient part. So that's the Alter Rebbe continues. The Alter Rebbe, Velochein, lo yuzkar, avoyin zera levatola batayro, bichlal biyisasur. Is therefore the sin of wasteful omission. Of simen is not mentioned in the Teira among the list of forbidden coercions, forbidden relationships. Av shecholomem, even though, in one respect, it is more heinous than they, and the individual sin, sin is greater. The sin is greater with regard to the enormity an abundance of the impurity of the clippers, he begets and multiplies them 
to an exceedingly great extent through wasteful emission of semen, even more so than through forbidden coitions. Meaning, when measured by the quantity of the clippers that sin creates, the sin is graver than the forbidden coitions. However, but yet, in order to do teshuva from this, it's easier than with forbidden relationships. Why? So he explains. It is only when measured qualitatively, the sin is different. For in the case of forbidden coercions, one contributes additional strength and vitality to a most unclean kalipa. From which he is powerless to raise up the vitality by means of ordinary repentance. Ordinary repentance, which is regretting and taking upon yourself to do good, that is not enough to be able to remove the vitality from the lowest places when there was in forbidden relationship. Like in forbidden food, the same thing. Elohim came, except unless unless he repents with such great love that his willful wrongs are transformed into merits. As we said earlier, when the regret is so deep and the sin itself is a reason for the drive that drives you to do teshuva because of the deep love to Hashem. So, and the Alter Rebbe here in the footnote that explains the difference. Mipnei de nukva de klipa the reason is that uh, through forbidden coition, this vitality has been absorbed by the level of yesod in the female element of kalipa, which receives and absorbs the vitalities from holiness, just as the physical semen is absorbed within the female in the case of this sense. So that is why. It is absorbed, and that's why you cannot remove it so fast. Not so with wasteful emissions of semen, where there is no female element of the klipa. Just like in the physical part, there is no female element. The same thing, the spiritual part of this giving of the vitality, the energy of the, of the kedusha into the Impurity, there is no feminine element of this. Only its power, the clip is power, and forces they garb, they encompass the vitality of the semen, as is known to the students of Kabbalah. So, this Talta Rebbe explained this is the exception that is different than ordinary sins. So, we, so again, to review, so again, so he says when the ordinary sins can be removed, the, the person himself is to regulature right away is elevated. But the fact, the acts and the energy that is in the, in the, in the dark four places that was done through the sin, that has, you wait, we have to wait for Mashiach to come to, in order to elevate, elevate it, or through a deep, to shuva, a deep repentance from deep love. An exception we said is the was the it was with the sin of, of wasteful semen that, in on one hand, it is more severe energy that is given away to the klipa, but in the other end, is easier to elevate it through ordinary teshuva and through saying the shema with kavana. Now, the Alter is going to say. That there is a yet a, another level, which is even in um, another exception to the rule, which is even more severe, more 
uh, harder to remove. In a way, it says it's impossible to remove. And what is it? That is if the forbidden relationships went down to this world to the point that it gave birth to an illegitimate child, then it's already in the physical, in the, the, it became a part of the physical world. And that's why, in that case, a person, no matter how Teshuvah is doing, is not able to change it because there's something that was created through his deeds. From the above explanation, that the vitality of the forbidden conditions can be released through repentance out of love. We will understand that which our sages say, our sages say, which is a fault that cannot be rectified, is having incestuous intercourse and giving birth to a bastard, to an illegitimate child. Because then it doesn't matter what kind of teshuvah you do, it doesn't help. Because then, once this illegitimate child is born, through the sinner, though the sinner undertakes such great repentance as repentance of great love, he cannot cause the vitality to ascend to sanctity. Why? Since it is already descended into this world and has been clothed in the body of flesh and blood. So even repentance out of great love cannot rectify this. Okay, so here it says that's impossible. But still, however, still it is explained elsewhere that if the repentance is powerful enough, it can actually affect the death of the bastard. And one, and, and once it, it ceases to, to be a body of flesh and blood, its vitality can ascend to holiness. Now, there is, it doesn't mean, God forbid, that you are allowed to, to kill a child, the idol with a child, of course not. It is, nevertheless, yeah, there is the stories of the, there's a story of, by the Mittler Rebbe, it's a long story, the Alter Rebbe, with, uh, with a rabbi that the Alter Rebbe told him to become a wagon driver and he didn't understand. And one day when he was already, the Alter Rebbe already passed away and he was already in his 80s, he became a wagon driver and, and uh, he was traveling, he didn't know how to do it, whatever. It's a long story short that he became a wagon driver and he ended up in an inn and in that place there was a Jew that was a big sinner. And he was married to someone not Jewish, and he had, uh, had a different illeg illegitimate children. And this, when he heard that this chassid, the wagon driver, was waking up at night and praying, tikkun chatzos, crying and praying, and hearing this neighbor in the, in the inn crying and praying, that opened up his heart, and he, he had a feeling of he wants to do teshuva. And he had a change of heart and he started feeling so terrible and he started crying and, and, and you know, and um, for all, all the bad things that he did and the, the effect that it had in this world. And he became literally sick and, he, and with the, the doctor say he was there, very dangerous. He was about to die. And then someone came over and told that, uh, told the people around him that is his uh, non-Jewish wife and children, they drowned and they, uh, they passed away. So the doctor said, don't tell him, don't tell him. He's, he's very sick. He can't, uh, he can't take it. But this rabbi, Rabbi Yosef, the Balagola, the wagon driver, he went, he went to them secretly and he whispered this in his ear. And, uh, and that brought them back. 
and the Alter Rebbe explains that the Mitra Rebbe talks about it. The Mitra Rebbe explains that when a person, this is a very, very exception to the rule, that a person de- does such deep teshuva, it can have an effect even on the physical thing that, come, that, that happened as a result in this physical world. And that's why the, the, the life was removed from them from above, from Hashem. It's not that God forbid that he would go do something to kill someone. God forbid, of course not. That's is forbidden. But if, if it comes from Hashem in a way that a person regrets so deep to, deeply the, the bad effect that he had in this world, that it was able to eliminate this, uh, even the physical act the effect that had in this physical world. So, Hashem help us all of the tshuva that we do in a positive way, should be the simchadeg way, should eliminate all negativities in a, in, in a way that it should be peaceful, in a way it should be only good things in, in a revealed way. And on this day of Sarah uh, we should have the coming of Mashiach very soon. Amen.